In this video, I'd like to answer 10 top most common questions about hyperbaric therapy. Thank you for asking those questions in the comments section. I always do my best to answer them if I can. And if I can't, you're welcome to book a consultation with me where I can dive into your situation in more detail. But let's move to these 10 most common questions. First question is the question that people normally have before they even start with hyperbaric therapy. And it's a legitimate question. Will hyperbaric therapy help me in my particular health situation? Like with any therapy, it's very difficult to predict to what extent exactly any therapy will produce any effect. However, if a situation, if a health condition that you're trying to help is on the list of approved indications or off label indications, chances are that hyperbaric therapy will make a difference and produce an effect. We're adding more and more uh, conditions to the list of off label indications every day. Um, now there are more than 100 that include traumatic brain injury, autoimmune condition, um, many um, inflammatory diseases that can be helped with hyperbaric therapy. So if you're unsure, look at the list of approved indications, off-label indications. And if you're still unsure, I recommend consulting with a hyperbaric practitioner who would know much better looking at, into your situation in detail. Second question that people ask once they determine that hyperbaric therapy might be a suitable therapy for them is how many sessions will it take to see the results? And again, there is no one size fit all approach in this situation because we're all different. And even for the same health condition, two different people will experience it differently. They will have different history, different therapies that they've tried and so on. I should say that a uh, minimum number of sessions that I've seen to be helpful in chronic conditions is 20 sessions. This doesn't mean that 20 sessions is the number of sessions that you need. This simply means that doing less than 20 sessions will unlikely produce the result that you're looking for. This number can go to 40, 60, 100, 120 sessions. It really depends on the individual situation. What's important is that sessions done as close together as possible, as this will increase the effectiveness of hyperbaric and probably at the end decrease the total amount of sessions needed. Third question is, uh, what is the best hyperbaric protocol? It's a bit different from how many sessions needed because hyperbaric protocol includes several variables. Hyperbaric protocol looks at the pressure that we will be using, at the percentage of oxygen that we will be using, at the number of sessions, and the frequency of sessions. And frequency here is super important. As I said, hyperbaric therapy is not a one session therapy. It really produces effects through the multiple sessions that are done cl as close together as possible. Hyperbaric therapy has cumulative effects, so next session builds on the effects of the previous session. To put together the best hyperbaric protocol, I recommend consulting with a hyperbaric practitioner or any practitioner, any health practitioner who is familiar with hyperbaric therapy and who knows how to put together that hyperbaric protocol. The next question that comes up a lot is, um, are hyperbaric effects permanent or do I need to do sort of repeat groups of sessions in the future? How does it work? Do I keep the results that I gain from X number of sessions or do I start from the beginning when I start my new series of sessions? Um, again, this depends on the situation and I'll give you an example sort of to maybe help you understand this a little better. If we're dealing, let's say, with mild concussion, which is acute, so person experienced concussion, which is mild, two days ago, we know from experience that uh, they will probably need 10 to 12 sessions done uh, twice a day in total for resolution of the mild concussion 
uh, consequences. They will not need additional sessions, most likely in the future, to help with this mild concussion episode. It will be resolved um, after 10 to 12 sessions. On the other hand, if a person is dealing with an autoimmune condition that sort of is characterized by flares when the symptoms get worse and remission when symptoms get better, this person will need more sessions during the flare phase or maybe right before if they have the warning signs and they need to restart their sessions of hyperbaric therapy altogether several times a year, uh, which means that they need continuous therapy to keep up with the benefits of hyperbaric therapy. And then once you determine that, the legitimate question is what is the cost of doing hyperbaric therapy? Because it's not a one session therapy, so you need multiple sessions. Of course, there is a considerable investment both in time and in money that you need to make. And there are different ways of approaching that. You can either rent a chamber or buy a chamber for home use, or you can go to the clinic and get your therapy sessions there. I have a really great video on low budget ways of using hyperbaric therapy. You can watch it and you can see what will work better for you going to the clinic, renting a chamber, or buying a chamber for the home use. There are pros and cons to whatever path you choose. I can only add that here in Europe, prices for hyperbaric sessions start at 50 euros, and in the US, they start at $100 or a little less, and they can go up in price depending on type of chamber that's used, the clinic, and so on and so forth. Can you do too much hyperbaric therapy? Can you actually overdo it? The answer to this question is yes. You can overdo anything that you do in this life. I just saw a report of a woman who died because she drank too much water. Something benign as water could be overdone, so of course hyperbaric therapy can be overdone as well. Hyperbaric produces oxidative stress because there is increased amount of oxygen and this oxidative stress, depending on um, the amount of oxidative stress a person has, and the amount of hyperbaric therapy this person receives can be just too much of an oxidative stress. So when oxidative stress is too much and the body internal antioxidant capacity is not keeping up, it means we're doing too much HBOT and we either need to pause, decrease pressure, decrease frequency, decrease timing. These are all variables that need to be looked at by a hyperbaric practitioner if uh, an increased oxidative stress is suspected, and these can be modified, so hyperbaric therapy can be used to provide benefits for that particular person for their particular health situation. Can you combine hyperbaric therapy with other therapies? That's also a great question because it's rarely a monotherapy. Maybe for some approved indications it could be, but for most of the indications, for most of the health problems that a person can have, hyperbaric therapy is usually used in conjunction with other therapies. And we can combine it with many other therapies, such as red light therapy, um, or IV therapy, uh, maybe ozone therapy. We can combine it with conventional therapies, such as chemotherapy, depending on the result that a person is trying to get. Um, yes, HBOT can be combined with other therapies, but there is an art to combining HBOT with other therapies, and I'll give you an example. Hyperbaric is an oxidative therapy, as I mentioned. It increases the amount of oxidation, which could be very beneficial in conditions like cancer, for example. So some integrative oncologists combine hyperbaric therapy with chemotherapy. Both therapies are oxidative and could be used together in this particular situation. At the same time, when it's somebody with an autoimmune disease who has a lot of inflammation going on in their body, 
they really want to combine hyperbaric therapy with another anti-inflammatory therapy, not another oxidative therapy, because the net result that they're trying to achieve is to decrease oxidative stress and decrease inflammation. So yes, hyperbaric therapy can be safely combined with other therapies, depending on the goal of that combination. And in my opinion, this combination, like anything else, this advice should be provided by a hyperbaric practitioner, but by somebody who knows how to combine those therapies together. What is the best health and wellness protocol? This again is a very common question because not everybody has a health condition. Many people are healthy, it's very difficult to define healthy, but they consider themselves healthy, but they want to use hyperbaric as a preventative tool and also to take their health to next level. You can call these people biohackers. I really like to, the term health optimization and hyperbaric therapy fits really well into this whole health optimization and biohacking world. Now, in this particular situation, there are many different protocols that you can do to promote wellness and longevity and for health optimization. I personally do this particular protocol for myself and I'm gonna share it now. I do hyperbaric therapy for one month, twice a day, in the morning and in the evening for 60 minutes each time at 1.3 ATA of pressure. I use a soft chamber for that. That's my personal wellness protocol. After one month, I would stop for two or three months and then repeat the protocol. It's not the only protocol. You don't have to use this particular one. It's just an example of how hyperbaric can be used in a healthy person for health optimization. Another question that comes up a lot uh, from people who are getting familiar with oxygen therapy, with hyperbaric therapy, and even with ozone therapy. And they ask a question, can they just breathe oxygen at sea level to get the same effect as they would get inside a hyperbaric chamber? And the answer to this question is no. You will not get the same effect from breathing oxygen at sea level as you would in inside a hyperbaric chamber. And when I say inside a hyperbaric chamber, it doesn't matter. It's a soft chamber, it's a hard shell chamber. Whenever we're increasing pressure, oxygen, which is gas, gets dissolved in liquid, in plasma. And this amplifies, this really improves oxygen transport to cells and tissues because now oxygen doesn't depend on hemoglobin as it does at sea level. Right now, oxygen is bound to hemoglobin and that's how it gets trans transported to cells. When oxygen gets dissolved in plasma, it doesn't need hemoglobin to get, to get transported to cells and tissues. So we increase the amount of oxygen and we also improve its transport. So hyperoxygenation is so much more inside a hyperbaric chamber than it is from just breathing oxygen at sea level. Whether or not there are side effects to hyperbaric therapy. And it's a really good question because before you start any therapy, any medication or any natural supplements, it's a really good idea to look at the side effects section and to see what can potentially happen and how to prevent that. With hyperbaric therapy, there are very few side effects and most of them are preventable. And the most common I'm gonna address here and for the rest you can watch, I have a great video on side effects to hyperbaric therapy to get yourself familiar with it. But the most common one is ear, ear bar trauma. And it happens in the situations when we don't equalize ear pressure on compression. So you go inside a hyperbaric chamber, pressure starts to go up and in this period of time we need to equalize pressure inside the ear with the ambient pressure in the chamber and to do that we can do simple maneuvers like Valsalva when you close your nose and you 
breathe, you sort of blow into the closed nose and this will open the eustachian tube. This simple maneuver will, or other maneuvers if you cannot do Valsalva, again I encourage you to watch the video to see all the different ways to equalize pressure in the ears, but this simple technique will prevent ear bar trauma, which is the most common complication of hyperbaric therapy. As you can see, there are many nuances to hyperbaric therapy. And I encourage people to ask questions, to get yourself familiar with the therapy. Um, please leave more questions in the comments section under this video. I usually do my best to answer those questions. Ask your hyperbaric practitioners. If you don't have one, you're welcome to book a session with me and we can go over the questions that you have together. But in any case, don't be afraid of using hyperbaric therapy because you don't understand something. It's normal not to understand. That's why ask questions, get yourself familiar and get the benefits of hyperbarics.